Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. Today's session is about various cysts of the jaws. So this session is about the definition of cyst, the parts and stages of cyst formation, then its classification and the details about lesions with regard to pathogenesis, clinical features, radiographic features, histopathology, differential diagnosis and management. So the word cyst is derived from a Greek word that is kystis which means bladder or pouch so we know the cyst looks like a bladder or a pouch with a proper encapsulation or a epithelial lining and uh, this is the second most common pathological radiolucency in the jaw. So we have many definitions for cyst the most commonly accepted is the Kramer one it is a pathological cavity having fluid semi-fluid or gaseous contents and which is not created by accumulation of pus and is often encapsulated or lined by epithelium so a cyst will be always uh, with encapsulation or a epithelial lining so this part is a crucial part of a cyst which has encapsulation or epithelial lining so these are the parts of cyst which has lumen surrounding epithelium and further surrounded by a connective tissue capsule so epithelium could be stratified squamous epithelium or pseudo stratified columnar and the capsule consists of fibroblast fibrocyte collagen elastin and other cellular components so a cyst develops when the stimulation happens then it leads to the proliferation that is the multiplication then there will be the arrangement of cells with the creation of lumen inside so the final cyst will be a peripherally arranged cells with a lumen at the middle of the the cells aggregation of cells theories of cyst enlargement which was summarized by malcolm harris in 1975 focusing on three concepts that is mural growth hydrostatic enlargement and bone resorbing factors the mural growth we are focusing on peripheral cell division and accumulation of cellular content hydrostatic enlargement on secretion transduction and exudation and bone resorbing factors on osteoclastic activity so let's see the classification of cyst so robinson has classified as odontogenic and non odontogenic so in odontogenic we have periodontal radicular lateral residual dentigerous and primordial cysts whereas non odontogenic that is non tooth related tissues this is tooth related tissues so non odontogenic tissues we have median cyst incisive canal cyst and globulo maxillary cyst in another classification given by who it is based on the developmental and inflammatory so developmental we have odontogenic and non odontogenic just like what we have seen some additional classification the alveolar cyst of infants gingival cyst of adults and we have non odontogenic mid palatal cyst of infants in inflammatory we have follicular cyst radicular cyst and lateral periodontal cyst so shear classification is a very simple one the epithelial lined and non epithelial lined sorry so in epithelial we have development and inflammatory development odontogenic and non odontogenic so cysts of maxillary antrum are benign mucosal cyst or surgical ciliated cyst of maxilla and cyst of soft tissues of mouth face and neck all these cysts will coming under this category now let's begin with OKC or odontogenic keratosis. 
So odontogenic keratocyst, which has uh, lots of synonyms such as uh, dermoid cyst, cholesteatoma, primordial cyst, keratocystoma. So OKC was uh, named by Philipson in 1956. So it is arising from dental lamina or its remnants by proliferation of basal cells of oral epithelium. In clinical features, its incidence is 3 to 11 percentage of all odontogenic cysts and it has a bimodal peak that is 3rd and 6th decade and the predilection is more in males and it is commonly seen in ankle and ascending ramus of mandible and it has got symptoms such as pathological fracture, pain, swelling, discharge paresthesia of lower lip or teeth because of the nerve involvement and also since the cyst becomes enlarged and resorbs the surrounding bones so there will be displacement of teeth and anterior posterior expansion so when we take aspirate we get a odorless creamy or cheesy content in radiographic features we see a round or oval well corticated radiolucency with a large expansile and scalloped or multilocular lesion which displays uninterrupted impacted uh, teeth and also the inferior alveolar canal so there will be perforation of the cortex and the epicenter is above the inferior alveolar canal where the cyst origins and it grows along the internal aspect of jaw with minimal expansion so i can see a cyst over here okay so it expands along the internal aspect of jaw with a minimal expansion so internal aspect of jaw with minimal expansion you can see this okay so it has a few radiological types such as follicular cyst which surrounds the crown of an uninterrupted tooth and is attached to the neck of the tooth which is known as denticyst Envelop envelopmental type which may envelop an adjacent impacted tooth replacement type which form in place of normal teeth extraneous type which is in the ascending ramus away from the tooth and collateral type is adjacent to root of tooth similar to our lateral periodontal cyst so in histologic features you can see the satellite cyst which is a unique feature and the tombstone appearance of the basal cells the basal cell has tombstone appearance then we can see a separation of lining from the capsule then the big lumen and the paracaratinized epithelium so based on the histology we have two types that is one is paracaratinized it is the major one which has aggressive and high rate of recurrence whereas the orthokeratinized one which produces only orthokeratin which is associated with denticular cyst around third molar which is less aggressive and which is not associated with nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome so there are few syndromes where the OKC is reported such as NBCCS Marfan syndrome Ehlers Danlos syndrome and Noonan syndrome so we have differential diagnosis one is amyloblastoma the residual cyst odontogenic myxoma traumatic bone cyst and the denticular cyst so in management we need to go for enucleation masopilization or peripheral ostectomy osseous resection chemical cauterization 
or decompression. The recurrence rate in OKC is comparably high because of the presence of satellite cyst and the thin epithelial lining. It has got intrinsic growth potential and proliferation of basal cell. Okay, so it has proven that it is a neoplastic change. So it has got neoplastic change because the nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndromes reports the presence of OKC. Now we move on to dentigerous cyst. Dentigerous cyst encloses the crown of an unerupted tooth by expansion of its follicle which is attached to its neck which is also known as follicular cyst or pericoronal cyst. So Brown and Smith named this cyst as dentigerous cyst which is two layered enamel epithelium that is reduced enamel epithelium. So it was actually covering the newly formed enamel and it will disintegrate once it erupts, in, erupts into the oral cavity and it merges with the gingival epithelium and finally it becomes junctional epithelium but what happens if it is not disintegrates and if it start collecting fluid between the enamel and this reduced enamel epithelium this is formation happens so there will be degeneration of stellate reticulum at an early stage of development with associated enamel hypoplasia so after completion of crown formation by accumulation of fluid between layers of reduced enamel epithelium. So the enamel epithelium will become reduced enamel epithelium when the stellate reticulum uh, collapses and the outer and inner enamel epithelium comes closer. So if there is degeneration of stellate reticulum at very early stage of development with enamel hypoplasia, there will be accumulation of fluid between this reduced enamel epithelium so extra follicular type is uh, appears to be envelopmental or follicular or endogenic keratocyst so how does the cyst expand so it is by the tooth erupts the press pressure on the impacted follicle will be venous stasis and transudation of serum which increases the hydrostatic pressure and finally the cyst expands so in clinical features it is commonly seen in second to third decades and in males the common site is mandibular third molar or maxillary canine areas also mandibular premolar and maxillary third molars and it could also be found associated with supernumerary and odontomes. Symptoms, uh, mostly it is asymptomatic unless it is secondarily infected and it presents as a slow growing swelling which can cause asymmetry. And the aspiration will be thin watery yellowish fluid with occasional blood. So in radiographic features there will be unilocular well-defined radiolucent lesion with sclerotic border around an uninterrupted tooth crown so this is a cyst okay it is around the tooth crown a radiolucent lesion with sclerotic border okay you can see a sclerotic border which is around the neck of uninterrupted tooth okay so cortical plate expansion will be there so usually cbct or ct will be used to determine the relationship of the cyst to the mandibular canal prior to the surgery okay and mri investigation also will be done so we have three radiological variations one is the central variety where the crown is this is a central variety okay you can see central variety where the cyst is 
completely encloses the crown from one side to the other side where the tooth is centrally located where the crown is enveloped symmetrically here the pressure is applied to crown pushing it away from its direction of eruption so the mandibular third molar is a common example and which is found at the lower border of mandible or ascending ramus maxillary canine which forced into maxillary sinus maxillary incisors which is forced to the floor of nose whereas the lateral variety which is not symmetrical it is mainly on one side of the tooth so which results from dilation of follicle on one aspect of crown okay not symmetrically on either side which is commonly seen when an impacted mandibular third molar is partially erupted so that its superior aspect is exposed so you can see the superior aspect is exposed and its partial eruption the third one is circumferential type in which the entire tooth appears to be enveloped by cyst you can see the entire tooth okay so this is a tooth the entire tooth okay so the entire tooth is enveloped this variety be differentiated from envelopmental type of keratosis so differential diagnosis we have hyperplastic follicle adenomatoid odontogenic tumor calcifying odontogenic cyst ameloblastoma odontogenic keratosis and finally the radicular cyst so just like the first cyst we have just like our okc okay we have a uh, dentigerous cyst associated with few syndromes like cleidocranial dysplasia basal cell nevus syndrome mortex lamy syndrome okay management by enucleation along with the removal of tooth or marsupialization of larger cyst and decompression with orthodontic treatment the complications could be uh, after a incomplete surgical removal such as ameloblastoma this lining epithelium or from the rest of odontogenic epithelium uh, ameloblastoma could develop or epidermoid carcinoma from the mucoepidermoid carcinoma from lining epithelium from dentigerous cyst which contains mucus secreting cells next we have eruption cyst which is also known as eruption hematoma which is nothing but a dentigerous cyst occurring in soft tissues occurs when tooth is impeded in its eruption within soft tissues overlying bone so this is a eruption cyst dilation of tooth follicle by accumulation of tissue fluid or blood clinical features it will be well circumscribed fluctuant translucent and commonly seen with mandibular uh, primary incisors and first permanent molars transillumination helps to distinguish eruption cyst and eruption hematoma okay cyst and hematoma is different cyst and hematoma are entirely different uh, on a uh, microscopic feature cyst has a lining it has a lumen with disintegrated content whereas hematoma is just a collection of blood in radiographic features uh, we get a shadow of soft tissue with expansion of follicular space without any bone involvement and there will be dilated and open crypt so we can uh, excise the dome of the cyst exposing the tooth crown differential diagnosis it could be uh, misdiagnosed as dentigerous cyst or gingival cyst so gingival cyst of newborn uh, it is seen in uh, newborn babies 
mainly due to this uh, dental lamina epithelial remnants these remnants will become uh, proliferate and around 15 to 20 weeks it will become a cyst so it looks like a small white cream colored uh, cyst in newborns up to three months at uh, the crest of maxilla and mandible so it could be uh, misdiagnosed as epstein burls which is seen on the mid palatine raphe which is derived from entrapped epithelium along the line of fusion or also it could be bones nodules that is buccal and lingual aspects of maxillary and mandibular ridges derived from remnants of mucous glands so treatment is just the removal of contents the lateral periodontal cyst and botryoid cyst it is also from reduced enamel epithelium or cell rest of molasses or remnants of dental lamina most commonly seen around 50 years and in males the sites are lateral roots of mandibular canine like premolar and anterior maxilla symptoms gingival swelling with normal overlying mucosa and the teeth will be mostly vital so most of the cases uh, when the tooth is associated with cyst uh, the teeth uh, becomes non-vital but this is a lateral periodontal cyst uh, and most of the cases the tooth will be vital so in radiographic features it appears as round or oval or teardrop shaped so you can see you can see a teardrop shape and well circumscribed radiolucent area with a sclerotic margin which has less than one centimeter in diameter and there is no resorption of adjacent teeth and unlike many other cysts there will not be any resorption of adjacent teeth so it is lined by non keratinizing layer of squamous or cuboidal epithelium with glycogen rich clear cells differential diagnosis lateral radicular cyst where the tooth will be non vital also lateral dentigerous cyst associated with impacted tooth or lateral periodontal abscess gingival cyst or mental foramen so mental foramen also misdiagnosed as our lateral periodontal cyst because of its peculiar location and if it is present between the premolars management commonly by surgical excision without extracting the tooth so gingival cyst of adult this uncommon cyst either in free or attached gingiva soft tissue counterpart of lateral periodontal cyst it is due to the cystic transformation of dental lamina or glands or rest of serrae or also from traumatic implantation of surface epithelium commonly seen between 50 to 60 years um, but in females and common sites are mandible to canine premolar region so in symptoms it is attached to gingiva or the interdental papilla of facial aspect there will be small soft painless growth which is dome like shaped with well circumscribed um, which is ranging from less than one centimeter in diameter sometimes blue color in radiographic features uh, there will be soft tissue lesion if enlarges to sufficient size then there will be faint round shadow which is indicative of superficial bone erosion in differential diagnosis uh, lateral periodontal cyst peripheral giant cell granuloma traumatic fibroma management just by surgical excision now we have glandular odontogenic cyst it is derived from dental lamina and it is name given by Kramer also known as mucoepidermoid odontogenic cyst because of the presence of both secretory elements and stratified 
squamous epithelium. So most common in the sixth decade in male groups and the site is mandibular anterior which originate as a small painless swelling which has propensity to grow large and recur. So radiographic features will be cortical boundary which is smooth and scalloped so you can see the radiographic features both unilocular and multilocular appearance expansion of cortical plates with regions of perforation and also displacement of teeth histologic features this will be superficial layer of epithelium or columnar cuboidal cells will be hobnail with cilia or filiform extension of cytoplasm ameloblastoma kot lateral periodontal cyst or botryoid cyst or the differential diagnosis we can uh, manage it by local block excision rather than enucleation because of its unpredictable nature of recurrence now we have ceot that is calcifying epithelial odontogenic cyst synonyms are gorlin cyst cystic keratinizing tumor then calcifying ghost cell odontogenic cyst calcifying cystic odontogenic tumor so ceot was first described by gorlin in 1962 which is unusual and rare lesion with features of cyst and also that of a solid neoplasm uh, who now categorizes this entity as a tumor not as a cyst clinical features around the second decade uh, which is a bimodal distribution with second peak around 70 years more common among females uh, site is both jaw seen uh, anterior to first molars slow growing painless swelling with cortical plate destruction cystic mass become palpable and the displacement of adjacent teeth and it gives a viscous granular fluid on aspiration so it has few clinical types such as central or intraosseous which is seen within the bone occurs centrally within the bone produces hard bony expansion and may be fairly extensive whereas extraosseous or peripheral type which occurs in the soft tissue overlying the tooth bearing area which is pink in color circumscribed elevated mass which is measuring up to 4 cm and it is associated with odontogenic tumor now radiographic features it is anterior to first molar cuspids and incisors are involved so the well defined corticated curve uh, borders with curved cyst like to ill defined irregular shape with completely radiolution with small foci of calcified material as white flecks or large solid mass you can see the large solid mass so which is uh, associated with a tooth and in and it impedes its eruption there will be displacement of teeth then perforation resorption of roots histologic features there will be thick layer of basal layer of columnar cells and ghost cells become calcified that is why it has got this name dysplastic dentine which is laid down adjacent to basal layer differential diagnosis denticera cyst aot ossifying fibroma fibrous dysplasia cementoblastoma can be managed by enucleation or curettage now we have the inflammation cyst or the radicular cyst which is also known as periapical cyst apical periodontal cyst or rotten cyst which is the most common cyst which arises from epithelial cell rest of molasses in the periodontal ligament which is stimulated to proliferate and undergo cystic degeneration as a result of inflammation 
So in pathogenesis, there will be caries, trauma or periodontal disease which leads to the death of pulp. There will be necrotic debris which uh, stimulate the inflammation. Then apical bone inflammation. There will be formation of granuloma. Then stimulation of epithelial rest of molasses. Epithelial proliferation. The segregation of uh, cells and a cyst formation. Finally, the periapical cyst. So the periapical cyst formation. Segregation, it becomes a cystic cavity. So there are three phases. First is initiation where the cyst epithelium derived from the epithelial rest of molasses and the periodontal ligament and bacterial endotoxins are the main initiators of the inflammation. So there will be local changes in the connective tissue. Local changes causes decreased oxygen, increased carbon dioxide and reduced pH. Then the cyst forms by the nutritional deficiency theory which says that cavity forms within the proliferating mass in an apical granuloma by degeneration and death of cells in the center. So the cells in the center will be deprived of the nutrients and becomes cavity. So the abscess theory postulates proliferating epithelium lines and abscess cavity because of the innate nature of the epithelial cells to cover exposed connective tissue surfaces. Then finally the cyst expansion phase by osmosis and capillary pressure. So in clinical features we have the most common cyst of the oral cavity that is a 60 percentage of all cysts could be seen in any age and most commonly in males and most common site is the anterior region of maxilla and symptoms it is slowly progressive painless swelling and the tooth will be non-vital so you can see a non-vital tooth so you can see the non-vital tooth here and the cyst the expanded cortical plates okay so this is a symptomatic one it is associated with non-vital tooth cortical plate expansion this will be bony heart and eggshell crackling and also a soft fluctuant swelling the aspirate will be straw colored fluid with low protein levels and large amounts of cholesterol so the radiographic features the location is at the apex of a non-vital tooth that is epicenter where it originates you can see the apex the periphery will be well defined and if it is secondarily infected that well defined border will not be there the outline is usually curved or circular the internal structure it is radiolucent occasionally diastrophic calcification which may develop in long-standing cyst appearing as sparsely distributed small particulate radio opacities so if it is affecting uh, the nearby uh, bones it will cause the resorption and displacement of roots and the cortical plates will be expanded it will become curved or circular pattern and also invagination of the antrum is reported in the case of uh, upper teeth and it may displace the mandibular nerve canal in an inferior direction so you can see the periapical cyst So differential diagnosis could be periapical granuloma scar or a surgical defect, lateral periodontal cyst or periapical cemental dysplasia, traumatic bone cyst or mandibular infected buccal cyst. So management we need to do RCT. Uh, it has the potential to heal without surgical intervention. Sometimes 
RCT plus periodontal surgery and bone graft, sometimes extraction, curettage and enucleation. So untreated radiculocyst may give rise to amyloblastoma or squamous cell carcinoma. Next we have residual cyst which is nothing but a cyst that may persist after the extraction of causative tooth. Okay, which is more common cause of swelling in edentulous joint older person. Now we have non odontogenic cyst. The first one is nasopalatine duct cyst which is a most common non odontogenic cyst which is one percentage of the population is affected arises from the embryonic remnants of nasopalatine duct or incisive canal duct. It is uh, formed due to trauma, infection, mucus retention, spontaneous cystic degeneration of epithelial remnants or it could be due to any of the mentioned reason. So clinical features it develops at any stage more common uh, in fourth and fifth decade which shows light male predilection anterior region is affected like midline of palate and asymptomatic swelling in the anterior palate drainage through tiny fistula pain due to secondary infection or pressure on the nerves and rarely a large cyst produced through and through flexion expansion involving anterior palate and labial alveolar mucosa so radiographic features we have a well circumscribed radiolucency between the teeth that is central incisors in or near the midline anterior maxilla between an apical to the central incisors round or oval or inverted pier okay inverted pier or heart shaped you can see a heart shaped with sclerotic border you can see a sclerotic border Root resorption and bony expansion are rare. Diameter ranges from 1 to 2.5 cm. The histology epithelial lining, uh, which is highly variable, composed of stratified squamous epithelium or pseudocolumnar epithelium, simple columnar and simple cuboidal. And now blood vessels and mucus salivary glands with inflammatory infiltrate ranging from mild to severe form differential diagnosis as incisive fossa radicular cyst dentigerous cyst with mesiodense or median palatal cyst so we can manage it by surgical enucleation but treatment indicated only in presence of clinical symptoms and before placement of dentures the next one is nasolabial cyst. Synonyms are nasoalveolar or clastad cyst, which is a rare development soft tissue cyst occurring the lip beneath the ala of the nose. So there are two theories like which develops from entrapped embryonic epithelium at the junction of medial nasal, lateral nasus and maxillary process and also it could be arise from remnants of nasolacrimal duct because of the similar location and histology so it is more common in females at around four to fifth decade in bilateral 10 percentage of the cases mostly asymptomatic and painful if secondary infected it's a fluctuant and obliterates the nasolabial fold so it arises from soft tissues in most of the cases without any radiographic changes and it is lined by pseudo stratified columnar or cuboidal epithelium and goblet cells are seen. Acute dento alveolar abscess, cystic salivary adenoma, nasal furuncular differential diagnosis and we can uh, surgically excise it. So this median palatal cyst or alveolar cyst or mandibular and globulomaxillary cyst they were thought to develop from epithelium entrapped in the process of fusion of embryonic process but now it is believed that they represent the posterior extension of incisive canal cyst in case of median palatal cyst 
and anterior extension in case of median alveolar cyst okay next we have non epithelial uh, lined pseudo cyst aneurysmal bone cyst which is described by Jaffe in 1942 which is an uncommon lesion seen in most bones of skeleton it is an exaggerated localized proliferative response to vascular tissue okay so it is a misnomer which does not contain vascular aneurysm and is not a true bony cyst which is uh, modified by communication with the large blood vessels or it could be due to the lesions destroyed by hemorrhage or a vascular disturbance it has four stages osteolytic growth phase maturity phase and healing phase so it is commonly under 30 years with no sex predilection and ankle and ramus of mandible is commonly uh, affected with a history of trauma firm swellings which may be painful swelling and malocclusion with enlargement is rapid with limited mouth opening and recent displacement of teeth which are vital eggshell crackling but not uh, pulsatile ones tissue shows excessive bleeding and blood soaked sponge appearance in radiographic features it has peripheral well defined circular uh, lesions with uh, multilocular one septa which is uh, seen in between and ill defined at right angle to the outer expanded border which gives a soap bubble appearance expanded cortical plates which displays and the rest of the teeth we can manage by curettage and partial resection these are the differential diagnosis giant cell granuloma ameloblastoma cherubism central hemangioma odontogenic myxoma stephens bone cyst now we have solitary bone cyst which is also known as traumatic bone cyst or hemorrhagic cyst which is uh, basically due to the trauma or the faulty calcium metabolism or local disturbance or ischemic necrosis of fatty marrow it is asymptomatic seen in first two decades of life in males and commonly seen in posterior mandible the teeth are vital aspiration gives a straw colored fluid radiographic features the margin blend with surroundings and scalopy between the roots and reduce an internal structure without any septa differential diagnosis are radicular cyst cg cg fibrous dysplasia ameloblastoma and the last one is Staphin bone cyst which is also known as lingual bone defect or static bone cavity or latent bone cyst so which is nothing but group of concavities in the lingual surface of the mandible where the depression is lined with an intact outer cortex the pathogenesis is well defined deep depression is associated with growth of salivary gland adjacent to lingual surface of mandible where the anterior region near apical area of bicuspid that is a sublingual gland where it is commonly seen and it is rarely on the ascending ramus where the parotid gland is there fifth to sixth decade is highest incidence with male predilection without any symptoms well defined round ovoid or lobulated radiolucency about 1 to 3 cm in size which is lies below the inferior alveolar canal and anterior to ankle of mandible with well defined margins with a dense cortical border so management no need of treatment unless suspicion of development of neoplasm so that's all about various cyst of uh, oral cavity so we have discussed in detail about the 
uh, most of the cyst uh, in oral cavity uh, odontogenic and not odontogenic uh, varieties so i'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more thank you